Uh, killing the same people you claim to uh, be protecting, that's uh, what we just saw from a video, a uh, one minute video, the following the extrajudicial killing of two uh, unarmed civilians in the Northwest uh, region. Uh, let's talk with you, Metro Alex Ndiv. Um, this is as a result of a seven year crisis that is still unresolved. And where do you think we're heading from from now? And who do you think? Let's begin with who do we blame uh, at this point with regards to the outcome which we are having now? The population, civilians have been accused of being spies, the military, and they are killed. Same way, those who are believed to be working with the separatists are equally taken away by the military. I would really like to use the word blame. I would like to focus more on your question, extrajudicial killing by separatists. That's what the question says. The impact, that's what I want to say. I don't really want to go out of topic. Yeah, extrajudicial killing really is what we call extrajudicial execution, extra legal killing. That's killing somebody deliberately without lawful authority or judicial proceeding. That's what extrajudicial killing means. And your question said by the separatists. I would like also to clarify this to our public. A separatist is a person who supports separation from a particular group, from a large body, especially because of ethnicity. Separatism doesn't mean violence. So I want to make this because in Cameroon, we have tried to say separatists are with, with violence. There are people who are separatists in Cameroon, in the CPGM party, they are not violent. I am not violent, other people are. So I should make that correction, it's very important. The people who kill somebody, is it in Guzan? To me, they are criminals. That's how I call them. I don't call names, they are criminals. And in Cameroon, when there is a crime, who is responsible for that and other government? One, I should tell you, the job of a government is to govern, is to govern. And if you look at the Constitution of Cameroon, you look at Article 5, Sub 2, it said the president shall ensure the respect of the Constitution. Article 8, Sub um, 3 says the president is head of the armed force. Article 2 says um, the president shall guarantee the internal and external security of the country. So what I saw in Guzan, Guzan is not really a bush, it is a square. I remember Sakwe was beheaded in Guzan and the people, they were clapping. That's not the first time we today, the government, we supposed to be governing a country. We don't know the killer of Sakwe. That is a square. And what do we need in that square? I'm sure Mr. Ndiwu said something there. We expected the police to be in that square. Who is responsible to put police in that square? It's the government. What is the government? A group of people with authority to govern a country. My point is, is the government governing the Cameroon? What do I expect from any government, not just in Cameroon, any government, including the United Kingdom? You need what? Leadership to maintain law and order, to enforce laws, to provide national security, to provide economic security and economic assistance. My point is, if we go back to the constitution of Cameroon, is the ruling CPGM government upholding the constitution? The answer is no. Yes, we can sit here. We condemn criminals all over the world. I am very saddened to see young, healthy people, bullets put on their head. But that is not our question. The question is extrajudiciary killing. What impact? And the impact is it has exposed that there is a vacuum in the government of Cameroon. It has exposed that the characteristics, I'm not the one making, when you have what they call like a failed state, the characteristic, the international definition of a failed state, it means the government cannot control part of its territory. Can the government of Cameroon control part of its territory? No. I don't want to sit here and start talking. I know what a war crime. What happened in Guzan is a war crime. When they commit criminality in your country, who is supposed to make sure that there's law and order? The ruling CPGM party. In any country on earth, when people start blaming criminals, it means the government is, has failed. If you start blaming criminals, 
in the United Kingdom, when there is knife crime, crime in the street, they blame Sadi Khan, the mayor. There is a job description. It is his job to make sure there's law and order in London. And the prime minister, the difficulty in Cameroon is that we have parliamentarians, senators, governors, head of regional assembly. The problem is they don't have a job description. When there is a problem in Cameroon, they wait for the head of state to give order. The head of state have to give order about policing. When we have police, B, gendarme, all those forces. The head of state have to, when Martinez Zogo was killed, the police, they were quiet. The head of state have to give decision, investigate it. That is the problem. The parliamentarian in Cameroon, they don't know their job description. The governor doesn't know their job description. I'll give you an example. In Cameroon, um, witchcraft is a criminal offense. I have seen civil administrator deals saying that they should use witchcraft in order to fight Ambazonia. So a person who is supposed to uphold the law is saying you should break the law to fight Ambazonia. Recently, the governor of Southwest province or region said we should terrorize the terrorists. What is terrorism? Terrorism is a criminal offense when you have a governor saying that they should terrorize the terrorists. It means commit crime by fighting terrorists. How do you expect people who are supposed to govern the country saying such a thing, then the president is quiet? As if this is not enough, you saw senator praising the governor saying that they should commit crime. It means terrorizing the terrorists means commit crime to solve crime. That's what it means because terrorism is a criminal offense. So that's the governor saying it. Then the mayor of Goya too is applauding it, terrorize the terrorists. So how do you have people who are aging and abetting criminality? How come that they are running our country? I'm so sad because if you look at the constitution of Cameroon, the laws of Cameroon, most of the people who are in that position, they are not fit for purpose. They don't have a clue on how to govern a country. Thank you.